Now, if you happen to be in the market for an affordable but fast 50mm prime for your full frame Sony camera, then you are in luck because Sony currently have two options available. First of all, there's the super cheap Sony 50mm f1.8, and then there's the not quite as cheap but still pretty cheap Sony Zeiss 55mm f1.8. But let's go ahead and assume that you only have the budget to buy one of these little buggers. Which one do you go for? Well, friend, take my hand and follow me as we walk into the realm of budget 50mm. <laughs> Well, right off the bat, there's really not a lot to talk about when it comes to features. Both lenses are around about the same size, but the 50mm weighs in just under 100 grams lighter than its competitor. Now, the main reason for this is that the cheaper 50mm is made from plastic, whilst the more expensive Zeiss is made from metal. But in either case, they are both lacking any kind of manual dials and switches. One key difference that isn't immediately obvious, though, is that the Zeiss has a dust and moisture resistant design, whilst the cheaper 50mm does not. So the 50mm is actually the cheapest lens that Sony currently offer and it comes in at just £159 or $248 on Amazon. The Zeiss on the other hand is still fairly affordable relatively speaking but in comparison to this 50mm it is considerably more expensive priced at £649 or $629. So when it comes to scoring for price the 50mm is obviously going to grab an easy point. However when it comes to build the Zeiss just clinches the point here due to its more resistant metal and weatherproof construction. As for handling I'm going to award a point to both of the lenses because they're both extremely lightweight and portable. When it comes to AF performance in good lighting conditions, both lenses are quick and accurate to focus with no signs of hunting. Though it must be said that the Zeiss is slightly faster to focus than the cheaper 50mm. In low light conditions, although both lenses did slow slightly, the 55mm is still noticeably quicker to focus than the 50mm. However, the good news is that neither of these lenses displayed any signs of hunting even in these super low light conditions. When shooting a moving target at f1.8 in continuous burst mode, the overwhelming majority of the photos we captured with both lenses were pin sharp and in focus, with just a handful that was slightly misfocused, mainly as George got closer to the camera. The other thing I noticed from these images was that both lenses display a slight fringing issue, as you can see here. Though if I was being picky, I'd have to say that the Zeiss appears to have it slightly worse. But regardless, with performances that are just too close to call an overall winner, both lenses gain a point in this round. When shooting a moving target in video mode at f1.8, the 55mm managed to keep locked onto George as he walked towards the camera at a regular pace. The 50mm did an okay job too, but I didn't noticed that the AF would slightly lag behind as George got closer to the camera, almost as if it couldn't quite keep up with the action. When repeating the test but at a faster pace, this time it was obvious that the 50mm was really struggling to keep up with George as he walked towards the camera. The 55mm also had its issues and as George got to the end of his walk, the lens would occasionally refuse to snap onto his face but instead would decide to lock onto his jacket. As for AF noise, the Zeiss lens only made a very very subtle purring sound. whilst the 50mm made a much more noticeable purring and clicking sound that was picked up by the camera's built-in microphone. When focusing manually with these lenses, both offer a smooth rotation with a nice amount of resistance and a responsive control, which is ideal for performing focus pulls. Unfortunately though, both lenses do suffer quite badly from focus breathing, which is bad news for videographers. So with neither lens putting in an ideal performance, it's tough to really award points in this round at all. Although the Sony 50mm clearly has its problems keeping up with a moving target due to its slow AF motor, the issues I had with the Zeiss only really happened on occasion, and in terms of AF speed, it is clearly a much more responsive lens. So because of this, I'm going to be fairly generous here and give the point to the Zeiss. In our Bokeballs test, both lenses produce round orbs at the centre, but they do both have their own unique issues. The orbs created by the 50mm are noticeably more jagged than the Zeiss, though the Zeiss has a prominent onion ring effect, which really doesn't look that nice at all. At the edges, both lenses produce cat's eye shaped orbs. When it comes to general bokeh quality though, I genuinely cannot tell the difference between these two results. Both of them create a nice, soft, thick, pleasing bokeh, which is ideal for portraits. So 
when it comes to scoring, it's yet again another really tough call. But I'm actually going to give the point to the 50 mil here because for me, the onion ring effect created by the Zeiss lens really does spoil the quality of the bokeh balls. Both lenses do an equally good job of protecting against ghosting, but the Zeiss definitely produces less noticeable artifacts when compared to the 50 mm Though I should mention that both of these lenses do come included with lens hoods in the box if you do need that extra protection from glare. On a longitudinal chromatic aberration test, the results were very, very close, with both lenses displaying a touch of green fringing above the plane of focus and red at the bottom of the frame. Despite their minor differences when shooting with these lenses out in the real world, I honestly enjoyed using both of them and they're clearly both capable of producing lovely looking images. Now I'm a big fan of the 50mm focal length for portraits. It's a really versatile focal length to work with and when shooting wide open you can expect to create lovely defocused backgrounds that really make your subject pop out against their surroundings. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking Tom, you keep banging on about there being multiple 50mm in this test but there's only actually one 50mm the other one is a 55 millimeter, you silly knobhead. <laughs> what a fool. And yes, you would be right in saying that, you smug bastard. But the question we really should be asking is, is there actually a noticeable difference between 55 millimeters and 50 millimeters? And the answer is, no, not really. I mean, sure, the 55 millimeter is very marginally more zoomed in than the 50 millimeter, but really not enough to make a noticeable difference in my honest opinion. So in terms of sharpness from a distance, it is really hard to tell which of these lenses produces the most pin sharp results. However, when you zoom into one of these images, you can immediately see that the photos taken by the 55 millimeter are absolutely tack sharp, whilst those taken with the 50 millimeter are a little softer in comparison. Now, these results were also echoed in our lens chart results where the 55 millimeter continues to produce sharper results when shooting wide open at f1.8. When it comes to focusing up close though, both lenses share the same minimum focusing distance and the images they create are almost identical in terms of sharpness and contrast. So yet again, the results are really, really close and that makes my decision of crowning an overall winner a really tough one. But let's face it, the Zeiss is clearly the sharper of the two lenses, so it has to win the decisive point in this round. However, as a final nod to the Nifty 50, I am going to award it half a point for image quality because it really doesn't lag all that far behind the Zeiss. So in conclusion, conclusion, if you need a 50mm-ish lens that's super sharp, weather resistant and equally suited to photo and video use, then it's probably well worth saving your money and investing in the Zeiss. However, if you're a photographer who never touches video mode and you're not really bothered about having a lens that has the ultimate sharpness or a lightning quick AF, then the 50mm for 150 quid is an absolute bargain and it's certainly a lens that I'd happily recommend to anyone shopping for a 50mm on a super tight budget.